Good day and welcome to the Billy Billy 2021 first quarter financial results and business update conference call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Juliet Yang, Senior Director of Investor Relations. Please go ahead. Thank you, Operator. During this call, we will discuss our business outlook and make forward-looking statements. These comments are based on our predictions and expectations as of today. Actual events or results could differ materially from those mentioned in today's news release and in this discussion due to a number of risks and uncertainties, including those mentioned in our most recent filing with the SEC and Hong Kong Stock Exchange. The non-GAAP financial measures we provide are for comparison purpose only. The definition of these measures and a reconciliation table are available in, news, in the news release we issued earlier today. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded. In addition, an investor presentation and a webcast replay of this conference call will be available on the Bilibili IR website at ir.bilibili.com. Joining us today from Bilibili Senior Management are Mr. Ray Chen, Chairman of the Board and Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Kali Lee, Vice Chairwoman of the Board and Chief Operating Officer, and Ms. Mr. Sam Fan, Chief Financial Officer. And I'll now turn the call over to Mr. Fan, who will read the prepared remarks on behalf of Mr. Chen. Thank you, Julia. And thank you, everyone, for participating in our 2021 first quarter results conference call. I'm pleased to deliver today's opening remarks on behalf of Mr. Chen. 2021 is off to an excellent start for Bilibili. On March 29, we successfully completed our second listing on Hong Kong Stock Exchange, three years after we listed on NASDAQ. We would like to take this opportunity to thank our supporting shareholders as well as our talented content creators, royal users, and the dedicated colleges that help make this happen. With our secondary listing, we see an opportunity to broaden our investor base and attract more high-quality shareholders. We also gain more strength in the capital market, laying a solid foundation to better execute our growth strategy and tap into the massive video-based market in China in the coming years. After officially stepping to the 200 million MAU club in 2020, we continue the momentum, further increasing our influence among China's Gen Z Plus cohort and expanding our user base. In the first quarter of 2021, our MAUs was up 30% to 223 million, and our mobile MAUs grew by 33% to 209 million both on a year-over-year basis. And our DAUs reached 16 million, up 18% year-on-year. This is particularly impressive given last year's remarkable high base. As a testament to our rich offerings and engaged community, our users spend an average of 82 minutes per day on our platform in the first quarter. During this time, we roll out more premium content and the services and strengthen our commercialization capabilities while converting more traffic to paying users. Our MPUs grow to 21 million, increasing by 53% versus Q1 2020. And our paying ratio is a record high of 9.2%, compared with 7.8% from the same period last year. Our titlers are widely recognized in Bilibili at the destination to reach young generations. As a result, our ad revenue once again achieved accelerated growth, increasing by 234% year over year. On the back of this strong momentum, our total revenues reached RMB 3.9 billion, up 68%, and our gross margin improved to 24% from 23%, both compared with the same period of last year. Throughout the first quarter, we continue to enrich our content offerings and enhance our market share as the go-to video community for Gen Z+. Entering their 20s and 30s, 
Gen Z Plus is deeply influencing society and mainstream ideals, as well as driving all kinds of consumption in China. By offering diversified content in great brands and deeps, we aim to further increase our market share among this core Gen Z Plus user base, while expanding our appeal to all video users. We are confident we are on the right track to achieve our three-year user target. One of the primary drivers for our next wave of growth is anchored by the increasing trend in visualization, where video has become the pervasive across many scenarios of daily life. As China's leading video community, we are the clear front runner in this transformative opportunity, and we are only at the beginning stages of this rapidly growing trend. According to iResearch, China's video-based market will comprise nearly 1.2 billion video users and more than RMB 1.8 trillion in revenues by 2025. Over the next few years, we are committed to capturing this exciting market opportunity with visualization as it wings to our growth trajectory. With that overview, I would like to go through our operations for the period in a bit more detail, beginning with our content. Our PUGV community remains the center of our content ecosystem, representing 91% of our total video views. For the first quarter, we had approximately 2.2 million content creators uploading 7.7 .7 million videos per month, representing increases of 22% and 57%, respectively, both year over year. We strive to create an ideal home for all video creators, where they can improve their ingenuity, build a fan base, and monetize their talent. We continue to invest in algorithm improvements to ensure that our content creators can easily locate the audience who most appreciate their work. In the first quarter, the number of content creators with over 10,000 followers increased 54% year over year. At the same time, our advertising platform, Sparkle, continued to connect more content creators with advertisers, while cash incentive programs supported over 375,000 content creators in Q1. We also maintain an upbeat and encouraging community atmosphere that provides a supportive environment for lifelong content creation. As a full spectrum video community, we aim to offer a wider and deeper range of content to meet the growing demands of our users. In the first quarter, the most viewed content verticals on our platform were lifestyle, games, entertainment, enemy, and the tech and knowledge. In recent quarters, we have seen increasing numbers of both content submission and video views about games, knowledge, and animal-related content. Moving forward, we plan to further explain our content offerings in relationships, fitness, and automobile. These categories reflect the interest of Gen Z+, Plus, while also expanding our appeal among to a broader audience. Turning to our OGV content, supplementing our video content ecosystem, our OGVs provide an effective gateway that reinforces our leading verticals and explores new territories. For example, our investment in Chinese animation has become a huge bomb for our ACG categories, successfully attracting old users and new ones. Advancing our Chinese animation production capabilities, in January, we acquired Howling Nerd Animation Li, Hui Meng Donghua, one of the China's top anime studios. Its highly popular production, Heaven Officials Blessing, Tian Guan Si Fu, launched in late 2020, continued to win over followers in the first quarter, reaching 370 million video views, over 6 million likes, and collecting around 4.5 million bullet chats. We also released multiple 
new original Chinese anime titles in April, including final chapter of Link Cage, Ling Long, and the Link Click, Shiguang Dai Li Ren, which were immediately hit, trending on social media for weeks. Turning to our documentaries, variety shows, and TV and movie categories, to satisfy you the diverse needs, we then launched several hit productions in Q1, including our highly anticipated New Year Eve Gala, The Most Beautiful Night of 2020, and the Billy Billy Chinese New Year Gala. Our self-produced documentaries, Peculiar Foods, Ji Shi Ji, and the Little Giant, Xiao Xiao Shao Nian, and the self-produced reality show, Shall We Eat Here at a House, Qun Jia Chi Fan Hao Ma, all of which were welcomed by our Gen Z Plus users. In the second half of this year, we have plans to introduce two more self-produced music and dating-themed variety shows. These shows are geared toward users with relevant interests and supplement the newer music and, and the relationship series in our content ecosystem. Turning to our community, the bonds that we were created with Billy Billy and the community members remain strong. Despite the spike in the interactions and use that we saw in 2020, making the comparable base quite high. Our first quarter community activities continue to be robust. Daily video views were up 47% to 1.6 billion and the monthly interactions increased by 35% to 6.6 billion, both compared with Q1 2020. By the end of first quarter, we had 112 million official members, up 38% year over year, and our 12 month retention rate remained around 80%. We are very proud of this matrix, as they demonstrate the strength of our model bounding our users and community closer. Now, let's look at our commercialization progress. Our diversified monetization strategy is working, growing each of our commercial avenues in the first quarter. We now have a robust line of revenue stream born out of a solid mobile game business, thriving vast business, as well as a rapidly growing advertising business. Starting with our games, revenues from our mobile game business was RMB 1.2 billion in the first quarter, an increase of 2% year over year. At the end of April, we successfully launched another exclusive distributor of the mobile game, Guardian Tales, Kangong Qi Guan Jian. These thriving ACG titles have won over millions of new followers topping the iOS game download and the grossing charts for weeks after its release. Other existing games that we operate, including Fate Grand Order, Azuna Land, and the Princess Connect, remain popular among their followers during q work. As for our jointly operated games, Gingsheng Impact, Yuanshen, had another solid run in the first quarter. Derived from classic animal IP, we also added Yu Jing Hong, Yu Xi Wang, to our jointly operated game library in January. With China's mobile games market expected to reach over RMB 500 billion in 2025, according to iResearch, we strategically invest in Xindong.com and the CMG Technology Group, further strengthening our position in the game industry. Turning to our game pipeline, 12 of the games we hold exclusive license for have acquired approval for the release. These include Artillery Gear, Ji Zhong Zhan Xi, a throwing ACG title, and a Sword Art Online, Dao Jian Shen Yu, an exciting MMORPG. Both are slated for launch in the second quarter. We continue to work with top developers 
to bring more jointly operated games to BDBD -BD users. These highly anticipated titles include Tencent's League of Legends, Yingxiong Lianman mobile games, as well as NetEase Harry Potter, Harry Potter. Turning to our vast business, our vast services saw it in the first quarter, with our premium members reaching a record high and a robust growth in the live broadcasting. Revenues from our vast grow to RMB 1.5 billion, an increase of 89% year over year. At the end of the first quarter, we had 16.1 million premium members, representing a year-over-year -year growth of 48%. This is particularly impressive, again, given the high base in 2020 for comparison. It also shows that our core Gen Z Plus demographic have spending powers and a high willingness to pay for high quality and premium content. As part of our video content ecosystem, we continue to build our game and entertainment content, addressing our user diverse needs. We have won a number of high quality esports content contracts, including live broadcasting rights of League of Legends World Championship and more recently acquired League of Legends Pro League in China. Additionally, our VTuber and other entertainment live broadcasting continue to draw young users' attention. As we explore more ways to integrate live broadcasting content with our video platform, we see great potential to expand this business even further. Last but not least, let's review our advertising business. Beginning with the success of our 2020 New Year's Eve Gala, a wider variety of advertisers come to Bidi Bidi to reach their designed audience of young generation. Revenue from our advertising services was RMB 750 million, up 234% year over year, representing our eighth quarter of accelerated growth. For the first quarter, the top five leading advertising verticals were GAMS, digital and 3C products, food and privilege, e-commerce, and skin care and cosmetics. Increasing improvements to ad distribution algorithms also supported our advertising business growth. As we continue to enhance our brand awareness, increase our influence among the Gen Z Plus demographics, and improve our ad products, we are confident that advertising dollars are sure to follow. Building on the momentum of last year, we are off to a great start in 2021. Our financial and operational accomplishments across our content, community, and commercialization secure one place us on firm footing of achieve our next phase of growth. We are entered a new era when the transformation to visualization is taking shape as we speak. As a full-spectrum video community and the go-to platform for the Gen Z Plus demographics, we have reached a new starting point from which to grow. Riding the visualization wave, we will continue to invest in our content ecosystem and enhance our brand among the rising and massive video market, where we are established leaders and continue to get market share. This concludes Mr. Chen's remarks. I will now provide a brief overview of our financial results for the first quarter of 2021 and all look for Q2. Total net revenues for the first quarter were RMB 3.9 billion, up 68% from the same period of 2020. We continue to see a more balanced and diversified revenue mix. Our total net revenues breakdown by revenue stream were approximately 30% mobile games, 38% VAS, 18% advertising, and 14% e-commerce and other business. Cost of revenues increased by 66% year over year to RMB 3 billion. Revenue sharing cost, a key component of cost of revenues, were RMB 1.4 billion, also a 58% increase from the same period in 2020. Gross profit 
increased by 77% year over year to MB 937.9 million. Our gross margin improved to 24% in the first quarter, compared with 23% from the same period last year. Total operating expenses were MB 1.97 billion, up 83% from the same period in 2020. Selling and marketing expenses were MB 1 billion, representing a 65% increase year over year. The increase was primarily attributable to the increased channel and marketing expenses associated with our app and brand, as well as the increase in sales and marketing personnel. By allocating resources to build our brand and appeal among broader audience, we achieved substantially growth in 2020. We believe the, the effects that will be even further reaching, with positive impact to the market over the long run. This is a continuation of the momentum we achieved in 2020, and we can already see the benefits of strategy through our broader user base demographics content, and overall industry leadership. We plan to continue building on this track in 2021 to further strengthen and expand our virtuous growth cycle. GNA expenses was RMB 389 million, representing a 127% increase year over year. The increase was primarily due to increased headcount in general and administrative personnel, increased share rent-based compensation uh, expenses, higher rental expenses, and other GNA expenses. R&D expenses were RMB 580 million, re representing a 95% increase year over year. This increase was primarily due to increased headcount in research and development personnel and increased share-based compensation expenses. Net loss was RMB 905 million for the first quarter of 2021, compared with RMB 539 million in the same period of 2020. Adjusted net loss, which is a non gap measure that excludes share based compensation expenses and amortization expenses and income tax expenses related to the intangible assets acquired through business acquisitions, was RMB 666 million compared with RMB 475 million in the same period of 2020. Basic and diluted net loss per share were RMB 2.54. Adjusted basic and diluted net loss per share were RMB 1.87. As of March 31, 2021, we had cash and cash equivalents, time deposits, as well as short-term investments of RMB 27 billion compared to RMB 12.8 billion as of December 31, 2020. With that in mind, we are currently projecting net revenues for the second quarter of 2021 to be between RMB 4.25 billion and RMB 4.35 billion. Thank you for your attention. We would like now to open the call to your question. Operator, please go ahead. As a reminder, to ask a question, you will need to press star 1 on your telephone. To withdraw your question, press the pound or hash key. For the benefit of all participants on today's call, if you wish to ask your question to management in Chinese, please immediately repeat your question in English. Limit your question to one question at a time, and you may press star 1 again if you have a follow-up question. Thank you. Your first question comes from the line of Alex Poon of Morgan Stanley. Please ask your question. Thank you. 
这个驱动力是什么原因？呃，然后想问一下，这个未来我们一到三年这广告业务的发展，呃，我们应该怎么去看？呃，和这个背后的驱动力？谢谢。嗯、um, ，The question I have is regarding advertising business. Uh, we have seen a continuous acceleration in year-over-year growth for eight consecutive quarters. Uh, could management share with us the drivers behind this growth, and how should we think about the growth in the next one to three years? Thank you very much. Uh, first, thank you. All the advertising value in our view is actually a reflection of 就是做一个不太完整但比较形象的比喻吧，就是很多平台的呃用户的模型更多还是像租客跟游客模型，他来很快，但走的也很快，不知道什么时候来，什么时候走。但最简单的话呢，其实最简单的方式是通过广告快速跟对他们进行变现，用赚到的钱再去买更多的内容，这就是我们比较熟悉的这个互联网的流量模型跟流量模式。那 B 站呢，相对于更多是在建筑一座城市。会把共同爱好的年轻人聚到一起，让他们在这里可以安家乐业。B 站提供的是不同的消费场景给到他们，例如是游戏啊、直播、影视内容、IP 衍生周边、线下活动等等。他们越喜欢这座城市，爱上这座城市，也会让身边的所有人进入这座城市。可能这个速度开始慢，但是后续的潜力还是比较巨大。Okay, I'll briefly translate for Ms. Kali Lee. Uh, so we think the value of uh, platforms advertising business actually equals the values of the user itself. A not so accurate metaphor would be um, many other platforms out there, they are running a rental or a tourist model. You never know when your user will come when they will go. So the easiest way is to leverage advertising to quickly achieve monetization and use the money that they make to buy more content. This is the traditional internet model. But for Billy Billy, what we are trying to do is to build a city. We are trying to gather the young users with the same similar interest, uh, ask them to become a resident of the city. We provide different type of consumption scenarios to them to cater their needs, including such as games, live broadcasting, uh, movie and content and derivative, uh, derivative products, and even offline activities. And they will grow fond of the city and even fall in love with it. And they will invite more friends to join the neighborhood. And for this process, it might start really, uh, probably start really slow. But once the momentum is built, it will accelerate and has great potential. 呃，所以广告在 B 站这座城市的价值是什么？因为这里活跃着中国大概近一半的年轻人，他们的平均年纪是二十二点八岁，百分之八十六的用户是三十五岁以下，主要是集中在一二线城市，占百分之五十。他们拥有绝对的消费话语权的同时，也是核心的消费人群，所以必然也是广告主最渴望触达的这群用户跟人群。随着未来几年 B 站品牌认知力的增强，用户的增长，相信这个品类的边界的拓宽，也会让这座城市的人口变得更多元，啊，也会不断的增加。So, uh, what does the um Billy Billy's advertise? advertisement uh, potential is, um, look at the residents. We have captured near half of the China's young generation. On our platform, the average age of our user is about 22.8 years old, and 86% of our user is age 35 and below. And our user, about 50% of them are live in the first and second tier city. They are deeply influenced the mainstream ideals, and they are the key driving force for all kinds of consumption. And they are the most wanted um, cohort that chased by all advertisers. So we believe in the next few years, as Billy Billy continues to grow its brand awareness and expand the boundary of our content offerings, we will 
be welcoming more diverse and more dynamic, more dynamic type of uh, user to join our 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 city, and uh, continue a very healthy and fast growth. 哦，所以因此我们是特别有信心，会让所有的品牌都会关注 B 站，也进入成为 B 站城市的一员。呃，第二点的话呢，其实就是好的广告，我们可我们认为好的广告也可以是很好的内容，好的内容也可以是很好的广告。在这一点基础上的话，呃，其实用户是从来不排排斥广告的。我们在用户侧。我们会优先的去选择更多优质的品牌跟潜力的品牌，形成深度合作，打造 KA 的案例。那第二呢，我们也会继续从产品形态、算法推荐，也会增加广告多场景跟多端消费的接入，综合营销策略也会进行迭代跟升级，这些都会让广告变得更多元，也变得越有越有意思。So we are quite confident that、uh, pretty much all of the brand they will be looking turning turning to Billabilly and become part of our community. And secondly, we think、um, a good advertisement could also be a good content. And for a user, they never repel good content. So on the on the customer side, we'll continue to work with. Uh, high lo- high quality brand and potential brand to establish deep collaboration and to build a very success cases for all the KA accounts. And we'll also continue to improve our product, our rhythm efficiencies, and launch more creative and interesting integrated marketing solutions across multi scenarios and multi devices. 最需要补充的一点是，其实未来 UP 主的创意，其实我们也会让他们更多的去对接到品牌方。B 站的广告不单是自己在做，我们也会跟 UP 主一起去做。例如，我们呃在已经上线的花火系统，已经有一万个以上的 UP 主加入了，呃，也服务于品牌客户。现在来看，效果还是超出我们的预期。And additionally, we think um there's a very Big part portion of the creative activity that we could、uh, leverage our content creators. We are、uh, we are working with content creators to pick their brand, to pick their mind, to ask them to work with our brand advertisers together. And on the、uh, Sparkle advertising platform, currently we already have t- over 10,000 content creator join. Join this platform, and the overall performance is exceeding our expectation. 呃，最后一个其实也是在我们看来最重要的，我们会持续打造一个强大的 B 站的商业中台系统，持续提高它的变现效率，使得广告的能力不单只可以体现在广告收入上，它也同时可以服务于 B 站的其他内部业务，比如呃，游戏联运相当于游戏广告的效率。那直播跟电商也是同理的。嗯哼。So last but not least, it's also very very important is that we'll continue to enhance our middle platform capabilities and continue to improve our ad product, including the integrated marketing solutions that combines both brand ads and performance ads. And、uh, our advertising power will not only be reflecting on the increase of our advertising revenue. But also on many of our two customer business, such as the efficiency of our jointly operated games and、um, live broadcasting, etc. 呃、uh, ，未来随着 B 站生态越来越繁荣，我们的用户增长跟品类的不断的拓延，在一到三年以内，我们还是特别有信心能保持一个健康，同时又高速的增长。谢谢。So for the next one to three years, as we continue to grow our content ecosystem and extend the boundary of our content offering, we are quite confident to maintain a healthy and、uh, fast advertising advertising dollar growth. Your next question comes from the line of Lei Zhang of Bofa Securities. Please ask your question. 
哦，嗨，管理层，晚上好。然后，呃，恭喜强劲的叶姐。我的那个问题主要是关于我们的一个就是用户活跃度的，呃，因为其实下去年下半年的话，会稍微看到有一些指标会有比较弱，但今呃今年这个 EQ 的话，我们看到一些就是关键的指标，像是呃 time span 呀，呃 interaction， 还有一些 D A U 比 M A U 的一个 ratio。环比都是有一定的上涨的，所以想看一下我们应该如何呃，就是呃，看我们未来几个季度可能这个呃整个 engagement 的一个趋势，还有就是想呃听公司分享一下我们可能如计划如何可以继续 drive 的整体用户的一个活跃度啊、呃，谢谢，我自己翻译一下啊、uh, ，Thanks, Management, for taking my question. Uh, my question is mainly about user engagement. We notice that、uh, Some key indicator like、uh, DAU versus MAU interaction and time span show、uh, sequential improvement. So, wondering,、uh, can you share with us、uh, what's the trend going forward and what is your plan to further improve user engagement? Thank you. 是首先我们可以看到就是呃去年从去年开始我们确实出现了就是 DAU 比 MAU 的这个比例。那个暂时下降的一个情况啊，但是我们要去找到原因，就原因其实并不是我们的数值在下降，而是我们 MAU 的增速在某一个阶段超过了 DAU 的增速。So, uh, indeed, from last year we see a temporary drop from the, for the DA to MAU ratio, and we have to look into the reason behind it. And the reasons are not, it's not because there's some matrix decline. But for the certain period of time, this, the growth rate of our MAU exceeded significantly of our DAU. So, 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 其实他们的活跃度提升，它取决于两两点。第一点的话，就是他们有多么融入到我们的社区；第二点的话，就是他们的这个消费的这个兴趣能够被我们如何充分的去挖掘。然后这两点呢，它其实是需要一些时间的。啊，它融入我们的社区也需要时间，因为它要关注呃越来越多的 UP 主，它要和我们的 UP 主有互动，它要和其他的用户有互动。包括的话，就是它在我们这儿从一个兴趣点切入。慢慢的变成有两个兴趣，有更多的兴趣，这个是需要一段时间的。然后等到他们过一段时间之后的话，他们就会达到我们过去的平均用户的一个活跃度的一个一个水平。所以我觉得它是个时间差的问题。So we think、um, the temporary job is absolutely normal, given that、um, last year we Have、uh, raised our MAU target, and we are really focusing on growing our overall users. And during that process, we think this is just a temporary,、uh, temporary effect. Given that、um, when the user join the community, it really takes time for them to become part of the a part of the community. We need time to cultivate. Use their habit and establishing community behavior, such as、uh, following different content creators. They have to get in touch with the content creator and other users in the community. And if they come to Bilibili for for one and specific interest point, they also need time to establish and expand their interest points on Bilibili. So all of that、uh, takes time. And there will be some lag during the process. 嗯，其实 B 站的用户的活跃度跟同类产品相比，我觉得还是不错的。对，因为那个就是我们的这个社区的模型，包括我们有非常丰富的优质内容的一个供给。呃，我觉得就是从阶段性的来看，在 MAU 快速提升的时候，啊，出现暂时的一个下降，我认为是正常的。呃。只要它有一个回升的一个趋势，啊，只要那个用户仍然是在高速的增长，我觉得就不用担心。So um we think for product like Bilibili, um we actually stand a pretty good DAU to MAU ratio in terms of the community product, 
and because we also have very vast content offering, we think uh, during a fast user growth period, a temporary job of the engagement ratio is absolutely, absolutely normal. And as long as we see the, the ratio starting to bounce back and we continue to maintain a very fast uh, user growth pace, uh, it should be fine. 当然我们也会持续的去提升我们的一个用户的一个活跃度关注更多的ABP主,让他与这个ABP主有更多的互动,让他跟其他用户有更多的互动,就这是其中一点。And we'll definitely continue to be very focused on elevating the, the engagement level. And there are several ways. One is to whether we can help our users to become a part of the community a little bit quicker. And uh, the measurement would be help them to connect with more content creators, follow, allow them to follow more content creators that fits their interest, allow them to establish more engagement between content creators and other users. The 与他兴趣相同的这种内容，那么它的活跃度也会提升，然后这个就是取决于我们这种AI推荐能力的一个提升。And secondly is on our um, AI-powered recommendation system, we will continue to improve the recommendation efficiency to allow our algorithm to cover more interest points for certain uh, users and um, to push more relevant content that fits to different users' need. And for that, we'll uh, continue to invest in R&D in our algorithm to improve our AI-powered recommendation system. So this above-mentioned point will be our constant um, areas for improvement. Okay. Mm. Your next question comes from the line of Ji Jingwu of UBS. Please ask your question. Hey, 感谢管理层接受我的提问啊。首先，恭喜非常强劲的业绩。那我主要想了解一下，就最近公司有好几个游戏领域这一块的投资。呃，那背后的这个新呃这个原因是在哪里？呃，未来会不会考虑更多的并购？那我翻译一下。Thank you, management, for taking my question. I have one question. Recently, we see Billy has quite a few investment deals on other um, game-related companies. What's the reason behind? Are we going to consider more acquisition or investments in this space for coming quarters? Thank you. 首先我一直说就是游戏是B站的主业之一 就是做好这个这个商业化，同时的话，我们的视频生态和我们的游戏生态也有非常非常多能够结合的地方。就这是一个能够很好的协同发展的一个模型。So I've always said that a game is one of the most important business for billability because for us, it's not only just a monetization; it's also a very important component of our content. And there's just great synergies between our um, game offerings as well as our uh, video game based game related video content. And for Billy for this game particular game business, um, it's just very natural as as long as we start to offer better content, the monetization just happens very naturally. 
对，而且我我认为，就是游戏这个行业未来的发展和增长，也会是一个有很大空间的一个一个事儿。嗯、呃，就是我觉得，就是未来未来几年吧，就是这个行业的这个空间很有可能是倍增的。啊，所以的话，这个也是我们特别重视的一个领域。So、uh, second of all, we think、uh, for game industry, there's still plenty of room for growth. I believe that in the next few years, there could be multiple times,、uh, multiple times growth for、uh, for this segment. So I personally take uh, uh, take great care and put in a lot of efforts in looking into this、uh, market. 所以的话，就是面向游戏这个行业，它并不是我们公司一个部门在做相关的事情，它是我们公司好几个部门都在做与之有关的事情，它是贯穿我们公司的一项工作。比如说，那个游戏在视频这个领域，它其实一直是我们排名前三的品类；然后游戏在直播这个领域，它一直是我们直播排名第一的一个一个一个呃一个品类。然后，嗯，比如说的话，就是我们和行业内大部分的游戏内容的研发方都有着合作关系，他们在我们这儿和我们做联运和广告的这个合作，所以就是他是我们多个部门都在做与游戏行业相关的事情。And for Bilibili,、um, it's not just game department is、uh, dealing with、uh, or facing the game industry. It's across all business department. And it's through our whole company. For example, game-related video content has always been our top three content verticals. And for our live broadcasting, game-related live broadcasting is our number one、uh, content on our platform. And、um, they, we are also working with majority of the game content developers in this industry, establishing close partnerships. 当然，我们现在。可能最重要的就是我们游戏发行这个这个业务，现在其实还承担了公司一块非常大的一个收入，它也是我们做的比较目前做的比较成熟的一个业务。And for the game distribution business, currently is playing a very important role in our business, and it's also contributing a very decent portion of our revenue. 对，所以的话就是我们为什么要在这个领域做投资，其实是为了战略合作。就是刚才我说到了，就是我们公司多个部门、多个业务都和游戏行业是有各种各样的合作，所以的话就是我们做投资、对外做这个游戏行业的投资，就是为了加强我们的这这些合作。So why we want to invest in this area because we wanted to establish strategic collaborations. Like I mentioned, there's multiple department. Jointly working in, in the game space, so the reason why we invest in this area is hoping to、uh, further enhance our partnership across different、uh, legs of our business. 对，比如说我们像那个投资心动，是因为就是我们和他们在游戏的这个分发的这个这个领域，就是游戏的这个。呃，和游戏公司分发的这个，呃，游戏产品分发的这个领域，哎，我们是有一些很好的一些协同的，啊，所以的话就是我们在游戏领域做的所有的投资，其实都是带战略合作目的的一个和那个投资，然后它都是为了和我们的这个业务能够产生一些协同。So, for example, the、uh, the the investment we made in Shindong is because we see a lot of the synergy and collaboration in terms of game game distribution. So, all of the investment that we make has a prior prior purpose of establishing strategic collaborations. 对，其实我们对于其他领域的这种呃投资也是会是一个。类似的一个性质，都是为业务服务的，都是出于战略目的的，都是为了和这个这个战略或者是业务做这种协同的。And that goes,、uh, that goes with the same with our investment in other area.、Uh, the purpose is hoping to achieve business collaboration and achieve business synergies across different part department. 
Your next question comes from the line of Daniel Chen of J.B. Morgan. Please ask your question. B站的用户增长，它是靠内容生态来驱动的，就是通过我们呃的这些UP主，然后产生越来越多、越来越好的内容，然后吸引用户进来。所以的话，就是我们呃用户增长的这个过程，我们也可以理解为它其实就是我们
thanks. Uh, good evening, management. Thanks for taking my question. Um, so my question is about the live broadcasting service. Can you give us some colors on the growth trend for your live broadcasting uh, service? We saw an industry-wide slowdown in this live broadcasting revenue since last year. Just wonder what is the outlook for your live broadcasting service uh, this year and or the next few years?我我我翻译一下就是啊，我想问一下，就是那个直播业务，我们看到就是说去年开始整个中国这个直播行业都有一个这个明显的一个那个放缓，然后也想请教一下，就是我们这个宾利的这个直播业务的一个最新的趋势
in many cases for availability, our content creators is our live broadcasting host, and the video content, it, it's a mutual uh, beneficial relationship. We think the live broadcasting can help our content creators to establish better interaction with their followers, and their video submission can feed back to their live broadcasting traffic. And on the other hand, we think live broadcasting is a good revenue uh, avenue for content creators to uh, monetize their traffic. So on billability live broadcasting and video, they are born to get born to be together. They have great synergies. 其实，在我看来，那个 B 站的直播目前还在一个早期刚刚开始的阶段，它未来还有着非常大的一个潜力。我们现在月活的 UP 主是应该是两百万吧，这样的一个数字。两百万。对，在我看来的话，这些月活的 UP 主，他们都应该成为主播。所以的话，就是这个其实。就在我看来，它是一个未来是一个非常有前景的一个一个发展。So from my perspective, I think Billy Billy Fly Broadcasting is still at、uh, the early stages and has great potential to grow. Currently, we have over two million monthly active content creator. In my view, pretty much everybody could potentially become our live broadcasting host. So、um, there's great、um, great growth route. Ahead of us. 就在我看来，直播真正的属性，它不是一个所谓的一个变现的一个业务，它其实是一种能力，就是它既是平台的一种能力，它也应该是 UP 主的一种能力，它是 UP 主的一种手段，就是它通过直播去和自己的这个粉丝做做互动。So I think、um, the nature of live broadcasting was never just about、um, monetization. It's more of an ability. It's ability of a platform. It's also ability of a content creator. For the content creator, they can leverage live broadcasting to connect with their followers, to improve their、uh, relationship, and also、uh, they can gain monetary rewards. 就这种能力，在我看来，未来应该是非常普及的。就像我们的每一个 UP 主都会写一段视频的介绍，我们的每个 UP 主都会去做一个视频的封面一样。就是未来直播也会成为我们每个 UP 主都具备的能力。So I believe for this type of capability should be widely adopted in the in the future. It's like how our content creator can write an introduction of the video, can create a cover page for a video, and、um, probably in the next few years, every content creator would have the ability to do live broadcasting. 所以的话，就是我觉得 B 站的直播业务它是一个内生型的，就是它是长在我们自己内容生态上的一个业务，它其实跟外界的竞争没有什么关系。就不管外界的这个直播的这个啊其他那个同行的竞争是更激烈啦，还是什么，就是怎么个发展的一个方法，我们不是通过去抢外界的主播来发展我们的直播行业的，我们是通过我们自己的内容生态长出来的这么一个直播业务这么来做的。And our live broadcasting business is really internally grown. It's growing from our content ecosystem. So the、uh, external environment would not really have any impact on our live broadcasting business because we don't need to acquire live broadcasting host from other platform. Everything is organically grow within our ecosystem. Okay. And that concludes the question and answer session. I would like to turn the conference back to over to management for additional or closing comments. Thank you once again for joining us today. If you have further questions, please contact me, Julia Young, the Lily Senior IR Director, or TPG Investor Relations. Our contact information for IR in both China and the U.S. can be found on today's press release. Have a great day. Bye bye.